what she do Maybe an actress in a
Hello, 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 hello. <clears throat> Dave, the maintenance man, had just mowed the poison ivy on the hill up to the graveyard next to the apartment complex where I lived as a six-year-old child. We sang dun dun dun, dun dave in carnivalesque mockery after he scolded us for riding bikes too wildly in the parking lots or kicked us off the air hockey machine in the apartment complex office. But the more pressing fear was that the poison ivy would get back into my brother's throat, once again making him itch from the inside out. The bilge from the steel mills made us perpetually sick, strep throat, ear infections, pink eye, and we mythologized the purity of our former home in the Allegheny Mountains of Pennsylvania. Before long, I met the next door neighbor, Zoe, a zookeeper's daughter, and we became fast friends. We rode bikes and played in the seepage stream. We had Kool-Aid, Jell-O, flavor ice, little hugs. We hid in the closet and spoke in possessed voices. We watched Dirty Dancing and Flash Dance while her dad was at the zoo, but we only had a few cassettes of our own. How did I hear about the mononymous Tiffany? Most likely on Z95 or B96 radio, or from a friend with a slightly older sister. The much older sisters had posters of the cure on their walls, but I wasn't ready. Coming home from Kmart, I cut the bulky plastic cage around the cassette and went to her apartment next door. A boa constrictor slithered under the couch, once again hidden from sight. We kicked out her younger brother, Dane, who drank milk with Pepsi. We placed the pink mini boombox on the bunk beds and danced. I think we're alone now. Alone in the orb sanctum of the bedroom, there doesn't seem to be anyone around. No struggle for nuance. Our on-the-nose choreography took us deeper inside the dream world of the lyrics. Tiffany, self-titled, is the root of my escapist tendencies. My memories regress to this first encounter with the privacy of recorded music. My family didn't know about Tiffany. Zoe's family didn't know about Tiffany. We alone understood what she meant when she sang, the beating of our hearts is the only sound. We talked about doing a show for the rest of the kids in the apartment complex. Even Eric the bully and his little brother with the constantly running nose. But that wasn't the point. Our way of escape mustn't be exposed to these interlopers into our world. We were running away. Of course, we were also learning what it meant to be femme like Tiffany, pulling the cuffs of our sweaters over our hands, tilting our heads demurely, trying to toss our fine staticky hair in the breeze. That was the year she did a tour called, quote, The Beautiful You, Celebrating the Good Life, Shopping Mall Tour, 1987. We were beautiful and this was the good life. So let's go there. The rest of the tape was weak, and we almost never listened to the A-side. Looking back, back at it now, I remember her manic version of I saw him standing there, having no idea she didn't write it herself. We fast-forwarded from that point to our favorite. The only other track I knew so well was Promises Made, a heavy-hearted ballad of betrayal that we heard every time we rewound too far. In the lonely hours of silent screams, in the heart of darkness, I break down. I feel the spirit of you all around. Promises made, our promises broken. We also had no understanding that our favorite song was made, performed, recorded by MCA producers, session musicians, and professional lyricists, all of them old men. Look at the waves. We've got to hide what we're doing. In my imagination, Zoe and I are on the way to Lake Michigan driving in her mom's cerulean blue Volvo 240 through a tree tunnel. We dodged Lake Barracudas on days that didn't have bacteria warnings and were vigilant for lampreys coming to suck on our legs. If you didn't get them off right away, they have to be surgically removed. Riding home in the reverse-facing seat of the station wagon, 
I found a leech on my leg, panicked and ripped it off, splattering my own blood on the windows. Decades later, Tommy James and the Shondells haunted me with crimson and clover over and over, but it didn't matter that they performed I Think We're Alone Now before Tiffany. It was our portal. Little girls in an apartment complex next to a cemetery watching for the boa constrictor to come out of hiding. All right. Thanks to Brent and Empty Bottle and everyone um, for asking me to join in this project. And I miss you all and hope to see you very soon.